Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to contain my first ever clear of a Sora's Blinding Light on the Legend difficulty in co-op play. Rounding out the Legend Sinister Dominion here, only have one left after this, the last one being the most recent one that released, Legend Surter. But this time around I decided to take on a Sora. In this fight, in the first phase, you use a flame team, and in the second phase, you use a shadow element team. So here I'm using Sheila, and I'm playing alongside Kimono Elisan, the twins Ayaha and Toha, and also Cerise. So this was a very interesting one. I have to say this had a pretty unique feel relative to all the other Sinister Dominion battles because corrosion and healing is not that big of a deal. But there's still a lot that you have to manage here, so in that sense, you know, maybe a little bit like Yaldabaoth, where you have to manage all of the small enemies that get summoned. In this case, you have to attack these ranged and melee orbs in order to give you and your team a buff that will increase your damage to Asura, and Asura is basically just very tanky. But the fight just kind of has a unique tempo to it. Because as you destroy more of these orbs, your damage increases substantially, but there comes a point at which Asura will clear all of the strength buffs that you've accumulated. So you want to try deal as much damage as you can while you have the most number of buffs possible in order to make the fight manageable in the time limit allotted. So it's an interesting fight. I mean, it depends on, to some extent, being able to deal burst damage, like I said, it's got kind of a unique tempo to itself. And so I decided to play a character to make things a little bit easier here in Sheila, who I must say, I'm not necessarily familiar with, you know, what's optimal for her or her best rotations or anything like that. But I do know and can see very clearly that her damage is just very, very high. So even playing her somewhat suboptimally, she is doing really great damage and this is the point where we're trying to burst as much as we can because once that divinity slayer gets summoned the three marks of existence happens and then strength suppression happens and we lose all of the strength buffs we've accumulated so we got off a decent amount of damage there i think in our fastest attempt that was actually where we got to the second phase and we got the team change so here we're a little bit behind that pace but just being a little bit behind there it really can throw you off because you go back to having no strength buffs. So although it seems like it might just make a difference of a few seconds, you might end up spending a whole nother minute uh, just chasing around orbs, trying to dodge these purple circles, which in phase one, there's plenty of healing, plenty of defense, not very threatening. I'm also a melee character. In phase two, those can actually be quite dangerous. And this forbidden circle attack is also a pretty dangerous one. Luckily, we get the shapeshift before that goes off, but you'll see in the second phase, well, actually, you won't see it in the second phase, but it was something that killed us several times in the second phase before we made some adjustments in our team composition. So I'm running Humanoid Zodiac. You do want a mix of ranged and melee characters to be able to take out the ranged and melee orbs. Because I'm a ranged character now, you see that that purple attack does quite a bit of damage to me. My defense not as strong as in the first phase, but Humanoid Zodiac, even without having uh, skills up, does do a lot of nice standard attack damage, making it pretty easy to destroy the ranged orbs. So that's certainly something that's helpful. I also have the ability to, when I take damage, leave behind a lantern that deals a nice AoE, and I can be a little bit more proactive with my dragon usage than my teammates who are utilizing Bahamut, a fantastic dragon for burst damage and kind of what you would want to do in this fight. But since I always have Zodiac because of the character I'm playing, I can kind of use my dragon a little bit more liberally, I would say. Still, I'm just trying to do basic attacks essentially to maximize my damage here, occasionally sprinkling in my third skill, I probably shouldn't use it as much as I do, honestly. I probably should just use it to keep up the Primal Dragalia boost. But I'm using it nevertheless and kind of throwing out my debuff zone because I have pretty good SP generation, hoping that I can get up another one in time. We're at a point, you know, near the 15 orbs, which is around when I think the clear, the Divinity Slayer, and then the clear tends to happen of all your buffs. So... 
here I want to try to get as much SP as I can, but I don't actually really have enough to use my last skill. However, I also don't have my dragon up, so I make a decision here that rather than use my dragon for burst, because my teammates seem to be doing pretty crazy bursts, I'm going to try to get off a second debuff zone. And I get it off in time for one of those Baja Blasts. And then just the break happens. It's just kind of ridiculous. We don't really even get our strength purge until the very end. And I guess we technically cleared before that. So yeah, you can have a fast clear like this, but if you don't get a break there and you go back down to no strength buffs, the fight can really drag out a lot longer. So it's an interesting fight, like I said, it has its own sort of tempo. Definitely looking forward to seeing what Surtur has in store because I've heard that's probably the most challenging. This is a kind of fight which is sort of feast or famine. You either can steamroll it if you know kind of what you're doing and you've practiced a bit or it can be very difficult. So let me know if you've taken this one on and if you still are taking on any more endgame content. That is pretty much going to do it for today though. I have Surtur left as well as Master Difficulty for Primal Midgard Swarmer and then that's it as far as the endgame. Thank you as always for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.